Boy did I have some fun yesterday doing this. So I scrapped all the rest of the video and I'm going to explain to you what a damned hole I dug myself into. Um, generally speaking, if you're using Timkin bearings, uh, original bearings, you can reuse the original shims and you'll be pretty darn close with your differential setup. I've marked this one here with two uh, tie wraps on to signify this was this end. All right. Now remember, this was pretty bad, so I actually sandblasted the shims, which was a big mistake because uh, we went through the sandblaster. This little three thousandths of an inch shim became a little bit warped, but that wasn't that wasn't my problem. When I put these shims back in, it was tight. It was so tight the crown wheel wouldn't turn. I didn't have the pinion in, but the crown wheel wouldn't turn. So I was trying to work it out, what the hell's wrong with it? So, <coughs> I took the dummy bearings out, I took all the shims out, put the diff back in, and like we did before in the previous video, worked out what the end float should be. And the end float was 0 0.101. That was it. That was the end float of the whole unit. So now I had something to work on. But what happened? Was I thought, being a, a clever puppy, I will get some brand new shims out of the box and put these in place of the originals. So by working out the thickness of the original shims, I worked out both sides and got myself a set of new shims. Alright, it should work. It was tight as a tiger again wouldn't move. So I thought, this, oh, this got me really confused now. So, what I did was what I should have done in the first place. Measured the whole thickness of the shim pack. Now, once I measured the whole ship, the, the whole thickness of the shim pack with new shims, I got quite a surprise. I had, on the crown wheel side, if I'd measured up the numbers of the original shims, not measured the thickness, but measured up the, the actual numbered ones, which there should be from the factory, so it would be 30, 10, 0, 3, and 10 thousandths of an inch, it came to uh, 53 thousandths of an inch. The other side was 55 thousandths of an inch. Are you with me so far? Get this. If I added 53 to 55 and came up with 0.108 that would be including a 5 thousandths of an inch backlash a uh, 5 thousandths inch preload should I say if I take off the 5 thousandths of an inch from that 108 I end up with 0 0.103 not a kick in the ass from here so the shim numbers were probably right and, also, when I measured up the backlash, I had eight thousandths of an inch. Pretty damn good. So why was it still tight? Even though I put brand new shims in corresponding to these numbers, it was tight. When I measured up the, th the, the actual pack, instead of being 0.53, it was point, point, uh, what was it, this one? This was 0.6. And this one, 0.55, was 0.68. So, there's some, either I picked up the wrong shim, but I'm sure I didn't because I spent all bloody afternoon on it. So one, when I took it out again, I calculated the shim thickness to be 0.53 and 0.55. See? Now... Turns lovely. No, no end float, and the backlash, once I put the pinion in, was 0.7. Whew. That only took me all day Sunday. Never got to church. So, what is it like as a pattern? This is tricky, so I'm going to have to move the camera. The pattern is not bad at all. You can probably see here the contact 
is here and here. On the other side, it's lovely, it's right in the sort of getting in towards the middle bit. It's a little bit low into the root, but I might play around with that. But what I'm going to do now, for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to turn it with my drill and put a little bit of load onto here and see if we can get a better pattern. I'll leave this running, it could be, could be interesting, I'll probably lose an eye or something. And now the other way. Oh, polish me shaft. can see on here we've got what's called ghosting so the the yellow stuff has got marked onto the pinion and now the pinion is marking the crown wheel but we can see better here that on the back of the tooth it's kind of low on the on the drive side it's pretty damn good yeah it's not bad at all but, right, it's half past five, it's beer time. But I want to finish this little section of this video off concerning the shims because it's really important. And I made a bit of a mistake by sandblasting the original shims. All is not lost though, because we have shims galore. I found a box full of them here. Now, what's the interesting thing? The shims for the carrier, for the actual differential itself, come in thirty thousandths of an inch, ten thousandths of an inch, five thousandths of an inch, and three thousandths of an inch. Keep that here. They don't come in twos, ones, sevens, anything like that. You have to make combinations, because there's a little bit of a leeway. So, when I was measuring those, I was getting some oddball measurements, like seven and four and a half and things like this but I knew I knew the sizes had to be stock size you can't get a shim that's like three and three quarters or anything like that it had to be three so what I did was for the crown wheel side here just now I've got a shim out of the box because I've already got them in here I'm not going to take them out again well not until I put the bearings on I've got 30 10 3 and 10, that's the order that they came out in. Right? I'm not concerned about this side. So, just for your viewing pleasure, I got the same numbers out of the bag, brand new out of the box. You know, marked up 10,000, 3,000, whatever it is. The total should be 0 0.53 of an inch. Correct? I've cleaned these up, I've run a paper towel through them, now we're going to measure them. We're going to set our gauge here to zero, nip them up, and we've got zero, five, six, uh, five. So, the idea is measure them and make sure that you haven't got an oddball shim in there, alright? Because it could spoil your day. The other interesting discovery was these pinion bearings. The pinion geary bit goes here and the, and the bearing goes on the back of the pinion and it goes through here. So what? Well, we tend to have quite a few of these left over and I found out just the other day if you sort of like a beer at work, like I do, they're the perfect size for a can and it stops them from being tipped over. Isn't that amazing? It's just like, look at that! You're never going to knock that can over. The other interesting thing I found out today was when I was looking through internet. I was trying to find out something about uh, patterns for the teeth here. We've all seen hundreds of videos about Dana 60s and people putting, com you know, this marking on and looking at the teeth and, oh, well, we've got to take a shim off there and put a shim on there. Remember, we've put the same shims on this original pinion. 
I didn't sandblast those, they were, they were the original ones. And we've seen countless diagrams of tooth patterns and stuff like that, haven't we? But I stumbled across a pattern today, this one, which I'll put on the screen, that really opened my eyes up. And it really did, because I, I thought I was going to take this to bits again, excuse me, and mess about. And I don't have to. Why? Because every single video you see on YouTube always looks for a pattern similar to this. Now, pay attention to the, the, the terminology, the heel end and the toe end. This is the toe, this is the heel. Why they call it like that, I don't know. But notice what it says here. It says new gears. On this particular piece of paper that I found, it's marked used gears. And this is what we're interested in, because we look at the, the cost of this one. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. This is on the back edge. This is what's called the cost end. And look at that pattern compared to there. It's in the middle. It's good. When we look at the other side, we can see there's a pattern here. You see what I mean? So, I think we're good. 